And there a bit earlier, the Pistons getting mentally and physically ready to play. From suburban Detroit, we proud to bring you the Pistons at the Palace of Auburn Hill. And time now to take a quick look at our State Farm lineups. One of the guys we'll be watching out for today, Chris Paul. And part of what makes CP3 so special, Kevin, is the pace with which he plays. He's always under control. The ability to break down defenses, but without being out of control and getting getting going too fast. That's what I love about him, just watching him play with, with that great flow. Yeah, he can cross you up and drop you off and make you look bad in the process. I mean, that's why he's such a terrific point guard. He's a natural leader. Guys typically rally around his presence as well as his voice. He knows how to help people get their shots, the ones they want. He's just a pure winner and a terrific player to watch. Looking at the last game for the Los Angeles Clippers, it was a loss to Milwaukee at Bradley Center. They had a chance there right up to the end. They only lost by three. Yeah, it seemed to me their three-point shooting was their own worst enemy in that game, Clark. I mean, even their wide-open looks weren't falling. Yeah, and I'm sure when they think back on that game, Steve, their main regret is going to be that they didn't get away from the three-point shot early on. They kept going to it. Tip off. Off goes to the Clippers. Right side, Jordan. Feeds to Griffin. Fires from 18. No good. And Detroit the other way now. And this is the first season matchup for them against this Clippers team. Yeah, battle of East versus West we've got on our hands tonight. This will be fun. Only the first matchup of these two teams all year. Here's Monroe. Basket is good. The assist from Stucky. Monroe's got the first points of the night for the Pistons. Let's find out now what head coach Benny Delvedo had to say to Doris Burke. Doris? He said that one of the players are keen in on defensively is Rodney Stuckey, adding he loves to use his size and his strength to play bully ball inside and get himself to the line. We've got to be physical with him without fouling. Guys, that'll take discipline. We'll see if they can strike the right balance on defense. Thanks again, Doris. They grab their own miss, and he lays it straight in. Monroe's got his second basket of the night. And we see him get so many points that way because the effort is there constantly on the offensive glass. Took him no time at all on that one. Going back to what Steve was talking about, Clark, this season series is a very brief one. Just one game in each team's arena. And when you're the home team in the first game of these two-game series, Kevin, you know you need that W in game one. Otherwise, you're vulnerable to being swept. He's off the pick and hammers it home. One of the oldest plays in basketball made that dunk possible. That's right. A terrific screen right there. Steve allowed him to lose his man and rock it to the rim. Oh, don't you love to see players working together and that, that fundamental play. Fun to watch. Now, here is Knight. Following the shot by Karan Butler. There's Big Dog. They get the rebound. Gets the bucket. Monroe's got eight points. You know, he's having a special quarter. 100% field goal shoot. They need to continue to ride and work to get him good shot. Now here's Paul. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Milwaukee. He was exquisite in that game, Kevin. It wasn't just the scoring. It was the passing, too. And his teammates, you could tell, were just really enjoying playing with him. You almost could see it happening with the Clippers being a playoff-bound team last year with the talent they brought in. And he actually made a splash in the playoff. That's going to be important for this team to fight over the top of screens defensively. Yeah, you got to tag him and stay right close to him because with his touch, he doesn't need much space to get his shot off. Tell you what, when he gets going strong to the hoop, there's almost nothing the defense can do. The Pistons have gone 5 of 7 today so far. Nice shoot to get this game underway. A tough first round matchup with the Grizzlies, and they had some injury scares in that one as well, Steve. Yeah, but they were able to pull that series out in dramatic fashion, winning in game seven on the road before getting swept in round two by the Spurs. But all in all, a very, very successful year for the Clippers. And that one's good. About three minutes gone here in the first quarter. Knight kicks to Stuckey. 
Prince over Butler. And there's another one for the Pistons. Soft defense right there. Way too soft. Clippers trail by four. Well, Tayshawn Prince going into last season surprised a lot of people when he re-upped with the Pistons. I think a lot of, a lot of fans expected him to go to a better team, but he stuck with his Piston team, a club that is rebuilding, wanted to see it through, and unfortunately for him, did not have a great season. Knight kicks to Stucker. Pass to Monroe. Rebound by the Clippers. Uh, he was right there, but the defensive pressure forced that miss. Well contested. That really made it a tough shot. Jordan with it. Now Monroe defending. And Butler gets it to go on the assist by Jordan. That's seven points for Butler. And Tayshaun Prince, one of those rare players to play for the same team his entire pro career. The Detroit Pistons. That's very rare. Yeah, very rare. Eleventh season in Detroit for Prince, and he's been a model of consistency and professionalism and winning basketball his entire career. We hope to see him be able to help lead the Detroit Pistons back to respectability here as his career winds down. Some firepower, Clark and Steve, from his offense. Yeah, Kevin, how about the air confidence? I mean, they yeah. really look like they believe in what they're doing. Yeah, a little swagger here from this team. They're in a nice groove. Butler can't get it to go. The Pistons trailing. They defeated Indiana in their last game. And their shooting percentage from that game tells the story. They got hot, and they stayed hot. I know. It was something to watch, wasn't it? I mean, I kept waiting for those guys to cool off. And it just never happened. Here's Paul. Averaging 16 points a game. Griffin. Crawford outside. Jacks up a three. And again, it's the Clippers from deep. Now well, you look at Vinny Del Negro. Spent some time in the Phoenix Suns front office as a scout before moving on to the coaching ranks when he landed that first job with the Chicago Bulls. And here is Prince after the three-pointer from Jamal Crawford. Back to Stucky. Shot clock at six. That is good. I like it. He could have gone for the forced finish, but opted instead for kind of a nice smooth finger roll. I like it. And Steve, you go back to Vinny Del Nick, scout for the Suns prior to coaching. He was also in broadcast. Yeah, he's been around the game forever. Uh, you know, a lifer. His father was a coach. Uh, you know, it's in his blood. He actually grew up just outside of Springfield, Massachusetts, the home of the Hall of Fame. So, Vinny, I guess, is just meant to be in basketball. Right with it. 14 points from him, the last game against Indiana. And don't forget, guys, his playmaking was sensational. I mean, he saw the floor making the game so easy for his teammates. Here's Monroe. And it's good. Terrific work on the offensive glass to make that one work. You know, they're just getting hammered inside. They really need to find a way to be tougher down there. they got to be physical. they got to man up in there. I agree. I mean, you look at the points they're giving up. Most of them seem to be coming inside the paint. Now here's Paul. Outside Griffin. Oh, 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 that athletic play. Incredible. Wow. And he throws it down with one hand. He's definitely showing some real sweet dunking skills here. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. What a play. Yeah, that was spectacular. Griffin's gone two or three from the floor. Here's Big Dog. Back tonight. Fades. Good. Knight's got six points. Well, it's definitely been a shootout. But the team that can start playing some defense might have an edge. Back to Griffin. Outside, Griffin. Gets it to go. He's got six. Both sides really coming out of the gate firing here. Guys, they look like they were raring to go in this one. A lot of offense early on. Knight kicks to Stucky. Over Crawford. And Rodney Stucky the right. on the assist by Knight. Stucky's got his second button. Knight against Paul. Hobbs the alley -oop pass. Oh, and they get in the way of the alley -oop. Not to be. Good play defensively. 
Here's Big Dog, defended by Butler. Stuckey against Crawford. Stuckey can't get it to go. Los Angeles has gone 2-2 two two from three-point range here in the first quarter. Back to Paul. Some nice ball movement by the Clippers. Butler with the ball. Rodney Stuckey covered. Blocked. Here's the three. Paul with the bucket. This is Paul. Paul's got seven points in the game. Big mistake not having more defensive pressure on him out there. Pistons trail by three. And taken away by Paul. And Paul with a clear path to the hoop. There's the bucket. Good. This is Paul. He's got nine. Boy, that happened fast. Just the immediate bucket off the steal. Well, one of the things they have is the ability to score quickly after a turnover. Here's Big Dog. Stuckey outside. Stuckey left side. Up and in on the way. Well, the thing that comes to mind to me is how effective he is around the rim. He can finish with either hand and finish strong. You know, he's got another skill that you love to see in the play. The ability to create a high-quality shot for himself off the dribble. Here's what Detroit's going with right now. Charlie Villanueva's checked in for Monroe. Maggetti comes in for Tayshawn Prince. And it's Bynum in for Rodney Stuckey. Here's Bledsoe. He dishes it to Billings. Tries to keep it alive. Oh, trying for it. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Clippers will retain possession. Detroit is a team that turned some heads early last season. It came out of the gate strong and overall seemed to grow as a unit, particularly in their play at home. Rodney Stuckey's checked in for the Pistons. We've got 155 left to play in the first quarter. Pistons trail by three. Find him with it. Over Phillips. The shot's good from Bynum. Clark, you mentioned the Pistons at home. They carved out that defensive identity for Coach Lawrence Frank once again. And it helped them put up the 18 and 15 mark they did here last season. And I like what they did, Kevin, because this has always been a franchise that has prided itself on defense going way back to the bad boys, uh, even uh, the last few years with, with Ben Wallace. Uh, so this is uh, a team that's shaping up identity-wise. And the fans like it. We'll see if they're able to translate all that defense into a playoff appearance this year. Gets it to go. Came off the screen and did what I call a right-now move, right to the rim. The defense had no time to recover. Outside Phillips. He's at the pit. Odom with the screen for Phillips. Phillips with another miss. I'm not sure about that shot, guys. The defense really all over. <laughs> 43 seconds left to play here in the first. Here's McGetty. And he misses the go-ahead basket. Well, you have to get a hand into his face because that's his range right there. Phillips kicks to Hill. Back to Phillips. He feeds it to Oda. The kick out to Phillips. Let's it go with a three. Oda dishes to Phillips. Left side, Billups. Billups can't get that one to fall. Really good offensive execution. Nice pick. Just couldn't get the shot to go. Well, you love to see that as a basketball purist. Guy setting a good screen and then getting the shot opportunity. The shot is off. The first quarter all wrapped up and it's been an exciting game so far. 30. Nothing like NBA action. So come out. And the second quarter getting underway. No team gaining an edge so far. And let's quickly break down the game we've seen from the Clippers, guys. Boy, the offense has been so smooth. Everybody working together. And you can tell they're getting good shots pretty much every time down. Yeah, they're a well oiled machine now. They keep the ball moving. They keep themselves moving. And as a result, they're piling 
holding up the point. Hannah in a power forward. Find him out there with Brandon Knight. Then Spaghetti, and it's Maxio in at the five, rolling the paint. That's the five on the four for the Pistons. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. Doris, what do you have? Thanks, Kevin. Big Dog, in their last matchup against the Pacers, was just a man on a mission. He ended with 16 points and hit the glass as well, coming away with nine rebounds. A performance like this was just the trick his team needed to snap their losing streak. Thanks, Doris, very much. I'm sure he's going to carry some of that great momentum talk into tonight. And that's the way it works, guys. A big game like that just carries over sometimes. We'll see. Yeah, all of a sudden the rim looks big. Everything seems to come easy, and, and the game just flows. Now, here's Maggetti. Following the shot by Karan Butler. And that one's good by Maggetti. Well, they keep going right back to the paint. And who can blame them? I mean, they're getting it done in there. Yeah, three of their last five buckets, guys, have come from inside the lane area, so I'd expect them to continue to go inside right at the defense. Pistons leading by three. The thing I love about Chris Paul offensively is the great job he does of balancing his own scoring with setting up his teammates. And when he scores, uh, the Clippers are so difficult to defend because then you have to commit defenders to him, and that's when he starts getting the ball to his teammates. They really want to find that igniter here. Yeah, that's right. They, Kevin, the offense has basically been running in place. They've got to get going. Off his leg. And the ref saying he kicked it. And a different look here for the Pistons. The Pistons have gone 4 of 7 from the field in this second quarter so far. And you mentioned Chris Paul's great passing last season, playing in Los Angeles, and with more help offensively. Clark, his points went up and his assists went down. You know, but part of that, it was rumored the New Orleans scorekeepers there were a little generous with how they notched his assists total. His passing is still terrific. And perhaps just graded a little differently, Kevin. You know, that is something that goes on, how assists are totaled from arena to arena. Now here's Prince. After Grant Hill misses, Prince fires. Can't hit the step back jump shot. Easy look there, but you know, he misses those once in a while. Tompkins, Hammers at home. That was a nice, strong one hand jam there. Yeah, brought it back and ripped it down. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. That's nice. There's Big Dog. Back to Byron. Get the lead pass. Swiped it away. Now the Clippers moving it up. Here's Odom. Oh, get it! Oh, watch out now. <laughs> now we're cooking with gas, partner. My goodness. A breathtaking display of aerial supremacy, no doubt. It's almost unfair, guys. I mean, when you can get up that high, that's crazy. That was a nice replay brought to you by Sprite. Offensively just hammering away in the paint. And that's 10 straight points inside, too. Phillips kicks to Bledsoe. The feed to Tompkins. Wide open. And the Clippers getting another bucket right there. Well, you look at the statistics. The mid-range jumper has the least payoff of any shot, but they've made the most of their chances here. Yeah, defenses don't want to give up layups or open threes, so they force you into that tough mid-range area, but they're doing a good job of knocking them down right now. Blake Griffin, he's checked in for the Clippers. And the Pistons with possession here. The Clippers getting the bucket. Just five to shoot. The Pistons need to get off a shot here. Here's Maggetti. Can't hit. Nice D from Odom. The Clippers in the lead. Following this one, they get to host the Hornets. That game marks the first half of a quick two-game homestand. Here's Billups. The shot will not go. And the Pistons now going the other way. He's yet to make an impact from the field, but his team is taking care of business. The Clippers seem to be a walking highlight reel last season. They were able to take full advantage of teams in the East when they met up. No shortage of drama here early on. Well, neither team can grasp control of this thing. I mean, both teams trying to get a hold of it. 
Well, then, Steve. Oh, yeah, eight lead changes already. Well, that's a big number this early in the game, so we're in for a, a treat tonight. This is a competitive matchup. Here's Billups, following the bucket by the Pistons. Makes the alley pass, and Griffin slams it in. Now that's how you execute an alley-oop there, fellas. And with an exclamation point, too, on the finish, throwing it down hard. What a terrific play on both ends. Yeah, the Clippers finish with an 11-7 record against the East. Wins they needed to need to jockey for playoff position. You know, even before Chris Paul arrived, Kevin, uh, the Clippers seemed to play against the East pretty well. So I think those numbers should only improve as the uh, Clippers mature as a team and continue to add uh, talent to their roster. Here's Maggetti. They get it back. Eyes again. Shot tonight. Now Plutso. Right side Billups. Right side Billups. Ball's not loose. Driven away to with the steal. Here's Big Dog. Passes it to Prince. Over Hill. Excellent D there from Hill. That's a huge part of what they want to do defensively. Limit his easy chances inside. Inside Hill. Now Griffin inside. An emphatic dunk. Well, guys, this first half has been about as tightly contested as you could hope for. Well, neck and neck, how about that? I mean, ferociously competitive. I mean, tight as me in an airplane bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's hauled in by the Clippers. Odom's got his third rebound on the night. Here's Bledsoe. Oh, what's oh, down there? Don't do that to him. That was fantastic. <laughs> wow. And Clark, the degree of difficult major. That was amazing. Here's Big Dog. He had 16 points in the win against Indiana. Put in a lot of good work on the boards. That helped him, too. Something has to change because that's 10 straight points coming in the paint against him. Close game as we wrap up the second quarter. Clippers lead by two. It's the NBA on 2K Sports from the Palace of Auburn Hill. Now, presented by Sprint. Good to have you here. This is 2K Sports, and the NBA season is starting to take shape. The Clippers battling hard in this one. They find themselves right on the bubble, need to reel in some W's if they'd like to move out of the eighth spot in the standings. Blake Griffin just having his way against Detroit. He's got a dozen points and has been looking really good in terms of shot selection, shooting it well from the field. But you know, Pistons also came to play. They've been having their way inside. A huge lead when it comes to points in the paint, making it very hard to defend against them. And that'll be our report. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope to see you next time. Quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. You look at Blake Griffin in this game. He's been everywhere. Two quarters into the game, and the defense still doesn't have any answer for him down on the post. Well, maybe mixing up his looks, bumping him out away from his comfort zone and out of his sweet spot may be a way to change things up. The defense is having a tough time dealing with him, and right now he's been unstoppable. So with Billups on the bench, there's who's on the floor now for Vinny Del Negro. Ron Butler, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan their front line. Crawford out there with Chris Paul. Pistons trailed by four. And you know, guys, Karan Butler was a solid addition to the Clippers last year. He signed a three-year deal, which was surprising given that he was coming off major knee surgery. Uh, but he gave the Clippers the outside shooting small forward that they needed. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Guys, though Chris Paul is a very tough competitor, he remains close with a lot of opposing players. He's even had them stay at his home prior to games. 
Paul said, you know, they say that players today are too friendly, but I don't buy that just because we're friends, we can't compete. When we step on the court, I'm not your friend. I'm just not. I have friends throughout the NBA, and I love to see them succeed. But at the end of the day, I don't want any of them to win the championship because I want to win. Kevin? All right, Doris. Yeah, you see how fiercely he competes. It's hard to imagine him taking it easy on anyone. And you mentioned Butler's outside shooting, Steve. Important for the Clippers to be able to spread the floor with Paul and Clark Blake Griffin. Yeah, Butler actually spaces the defense out and keeps him honest. Paul is a pick and roll operator, and obviously Griffin gets it done in the paint. And Kevin, keep an eye tonight on how many plays he keeps alive for his club. Just the way he works, the way he moves, the way he anticipates plays before they happen. Constantly looking to get an offensive board. And don't forget now, a walking highlight reel every time he steps on the court. This flair for the dramatic makes him worth the price of admission all by himself. This game very well could come down to a few possessions, and if that's the case, rebounding could play large. Yeah, in a close game like this, where securing the ball is so vital. Ball passes to Butler. Over Prince. Another one falls for the Clippers. Well, Lawrence Frank, head coach of the Pistons since last season. And before that, remember, he spent seven years as the head coach of the Nets. Had a very competitive team there to start his career. Here's Knight. They get it back. Here's Herman. And blocked. Now here's Paul. 11 points in the game. Jordan inside, Monroe on him, and Jordan gets it to go. Real persistence on his part. Stayed with the play and cashed in with the second chance points. Knight kicks to Stucky. Over Crawford. And Rodney Stucky the button on the assist by Knight. Knight's got five assists in the game. And you know, you talk about that tough team Lawrence Frank had in New Jersey. I mean, when he took that team over, they routed off 13 straight wins. Six of those were on the road consecutively. So both of those marks set records for a new head coach. Offensive rebound. Kicks it out to Paul. Back to Griffin. Snatched up. And another shot. And Crawford finishes inside. Crawford's got nine points. His team has to tighten up inside. Way too many easy hoops in the lane. Yep, that's five straight buckets they've given up from the key now, and it's it's hurting. Here's Stucky. Knocks down the 10-footer. 12 points for him. No question about it, guys. He's been one of their best performers today. You know, the Pistons had a look at the playoffs for a brief moment last year, Kevin, but couldn't quite make the sustained push. Their shortcoming made it three straight seasons now without postseason play. Well, he misses that one. He did knock down one three-pointer in the first half, though. That's and now it's just a four-point clipper lead. Sometimes folks forget about his decent mid-range jump. He can knock those down all game, given a chance. Griffin picks to Crawford. Good ball movement here by the Clippers. And Butler backing him in. Right side, Griffin. Fires from 18. Here's Jordan. Dunk hard with one hand. That's what he's all about. That's who he is. Retrieving those moves and it's loading right back to the bucket. Prime example of it right there. No question. Good point, Clark. Yeah, great rebounder and a great fit. Knight against Phillips. Inside. Here's Hammond. That's good. The assist that time for Knight. Knight's got his seventh assist of the game with that last one. Adding on to what you were saying, Clark, about the Pistons, the team has been around in one form or another for 70 years now. The goal in this play on 24 times. That's pretty consistent stuff. Yeah, they've brought home three titles uh, since they moved from Fort Wayne to Detroit. Of course, back-to-back -back titles uh, with Isaiah Thomas and the Bad Boys. And then uh, more recently, that group with Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton. Uh, so an organization that's rich with tradition. That's good. 
Big Dog's got 12 points in the game. And you can see the strategy has been to take the ball inside here. That's where you get high percentage looks and draw fouls, Steve. And it's a good way to play. And Leslie kicks to Paul. Outside Billups. For the three. Can't hit. The Pistons go the other way with it. 59 seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Big dog. He kicks to Prince. There's a screen. Down low. Here's Day. Blake Griffin pulls it in. Griffin's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. To the paint. Out of bounds. Detroit takes possession. Boy, did they ever make a mess out of that one. A terrible turnover. DeAndre Jordan's checked in for the Clippers. Green comes in for Chauncey Billups. Detroit with the ball. A 12-point game. Next game for them, they'll take on the Raptors at Toronto. That will be a getaway game for them, a one-game road trip. 24 seconds left to play here in the third. Day, no good. Hammond. That one goes. Count. Big Dog's got 14. And that's six great points now, guys. Coming on the inside. Yeah, taking it right at him. This is a great effort we're seeing. Paul against Knight. Paul kicks the butt. Over Prince. Shot is blocked. Got a piece of it. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come. Make sure to pick up a copy of 2K Sports Magazine. Hello and thanks for joining us, folks. The fourth quarter of play should begin momentarily. Now, let's check in with Doris Burke for the Sprite Uncontainable Game. Doris? Well, Kev, the Clippers come away with the uncontainable game. Some games a team can catch all the breaks, and they have made the most of everything that's been given to them. Great effort so far, guys. Thank you, Doris. Him in at the four spot. Knight and stuff here, man in the backcourt. Tayshawn Prince out there with Jason Maxio. That's the group for Detroit right now. You know, they'll want to generate more of those shots in tight, guys. Knight kicks to Stuck. Puts the lead pass in front of him. Here's Big Dog. Kicks to Knight. There's the dish to Maxia. Griffin with the steal. Now the Clippers moving it up. Griffin with the ball. And Paul with the basket on the assist by Griffin. 19 points for Chris Paul. His defense is porous right now. I mean, way too many looks coming from inside the paint. You know, that's four straight buckets now in the paint, and uh, anybody in the NBA is going to make shots from there. Prince dishes to Stuckey. Prince against Butler. Good look. Prince's shot is good. Fourth quarter still young, just over a minute play. Sketch up with Doris from the sideline. in shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two Paul's got 21 in the game Knight kicks to stuck over Croft and the Pistons getting another bucket right there you know he's always been uh, like a bad window washer a streaky shooter I mean he's definitely in one of those grooves right now now here's Jordan. He's guarded closely. And he draws body contact. Looked like a blocking foul, and he was uh, in the shooting motion. So he'll head to the free throw line. 
Well, when you look at DeAndre Jordan, just a tremendous physical talent. Great athleticism, can run, can jump. Uh, he's already good, but I think as his skills develop, I mean, he's got he's got the potential to be a great center. Here's Big Dog. Fourth quarter of play, and we're about two and a half minutes through it right now. Can't get it to fall. And for DeAndre Jordan, Steve, you mentioned this up right now. Almost all his points come across the lane, right around the rim, close in. Yeah, you'll rarely see him shoot from outside of the restricted arc area, really. I mean, his free throw stroke shows you why. He's got work to do there. He can develop something offensively, a jump hook and a mid-range jump shot. Watch out. Friends outside. Leads him in there. Him. And that one's good. They continue to barrel their way inside. And when's the defense going to adjust? Well, I'm asking the same question myself, partner. I mean, that's eight points out of the last ten coming inside. Outside Griffin. Oh, oh my. Hammer time. Wow. Hammer time. And he bangs it home with one hand. And that's taking it strong right there. Yeah, finishing in style. Uh, you can feel a sense of anticipation when he heads for the hoop because that's what he can do. And that was Sprite bringing you the close-up on that big-time play. There's Big Dog. Dishes it to Prince. And stolen by Butler. Stucky against Crawford. He passes to Butler from deep. Rodney Stuckey pulls it in. Stuckey's got four rebounds in this game. Knight with it. Chris Paul covering. Knight passes to Stuckey. Nice D from Crawford. This is the kind of defense required when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were right in his face. Ball against Prince. And Butler backing him in. Butler missing again. They really depend on him to convert those chances. A lot of times, even with solid D draped on him, they expect him to make it. Here's Knight. A strong finish under heavy pressure all over. And guys, 10 of their last 12 points coming in the paint. Yeah, I like their aggressiveness on offense, but the question is, where's the defense? They've got to put up some resistance here. Back to Griffin. What a play. No regular dunk there. A superb alley-oop. And it was a great pass to the set him up. No, those two have such a great feel for each other. Uh, they're just fun to watch play together. Chauncey Phillips has checked in for the Clippers. They set the screen. Shoots from the line. And the jam by Craig Monroe. You know, he's got a very laid-back demeanor in person. But he plays hard, and he does a nice job of really following shots, getting offensive rebounds, and finishing second-chance opportunities. And, Steve, that activity extends to the defensive end as well. I mean, he's still improving there, but he's already pretty good at stripping the ball away from shooters as they get into the shooting motion. And Paul gets it to go in. That's what a good solid screen will do for you. Gets you a good look at the hoop. To the inside. And there's Stucky. That's good on the assist by Knight. Knight's got his eighth assist here tonight. Boy, a nice little trend developing here, fellas. I mean, that's eight of their last ten from inside the paint. Now, they're getting high percentage looks down there. Their offense is really clicking. I don't see why they wouldn't just continue to pound the ball inside. Not much doubt about that over the back call. Yeah, he was all over his back that time. Looked like he was going for a piggyback ride. So it's the Clippers now. The drive by Paul. Now the pass to Griffin. Outside Phillips. The kick outside to Butler. Back to Paul. And it's Big Dog with the foul. That'll be his second foul of the game. That's his second personal foul. Fourth 
all against Knight. And it's Paul penetrating. The persistence pays off as they finally hit a shot. Paul's got eight points here in this quarter. Paul against Knight. And that's collected by DeAndre Jordan. Clippers leading by 18. Looking to end his cold spell. And Chauncey Billups the bucket on the assist by Butler. Butler's got three assists tonight. Knight kicks to Stucker. You know, guys, for a long time in the NBA, off-season strength programs were about adding muscle. Uh, but I think that's changed quite a bit. Players are focusing a lot more on core strength and balance. In fact, some of them are even losing weight in an effort to make themselves more flexible and more durable. Clippers foul. We talked about the big guys losing away. Kevin Love and Kendrick Perkins, examples of that for sure. Well, it's always been about conditioning. It's just, you know, now players are able to train year-round in, in a very innovative way. They've got uh, access to more information than ever before. Uh, I know Love actually has done yoga quite a bit the last couple of years to slim down. Uh, Perkins himself has worked incredibly hard. So you, you always love it when you see guys really pushing themselves to get better. Yeah, he's struggled with his shot this quarter, and he's got to find a groove somehow. Monroe, and it's rejected. And now in transition, here's Phillips. Here we go. And that one's good. 27 points for Chris Paul. Carving him up inside there, Kevin. I mean, the defense has been vulnerable in there. Yeah, that's three straight field goals in the paint area. That's really good offense. Back to Monroe. Here's Big Dog. Prince outside. Over Butler. And it's the Clippers with the rebound. I think he's just got to compose himself, gather himself. He may be trying a little too hard out there. Let it flow. Let it happen. Don't force it. No question. He's trying to pound the ball inside. That's five straight hoops inside. And if the D won't stop it, keep at it. I mean, those are the kind of looks you want all day long. And the Clippers making a switch here. Crawford's checked in. Here's Big Dog. Back to Prince. Feeds it tonight. Pistons passing it around. Stucky with it. And Crawford picks him up defensively. And stolen by Jordan. One-on-one -on -one fast break. Paul dishes to Butler. It's deflected. And it's out of bounds. The Clippers able to retain possession here. Chauncey Billups checked in for Karan Butler. Phillips inside the line and he hits Johnson the jump Davis. shot it's been the story of the game for him fortunately his teammates have bailed him out Knight against Paul to the middle Griffin grabs the board Griffin's got 13 rebounds in the game. See here. Pick by Griffin. The drive by Paul. Drop steps. And play stops as it looks like they call it over the back here. And the first player to experience the new amnesty rule was Chauncey Billups. No longer are players outright free agents after being amnesty. They actually go through a, a waiver auction system. It used to be in the past, the player was free to go wherever he wanted. Looking at who's out there now for the Pistons. Yurebko's checked in for Monroe. And it's Maggetti in for Tayshaun Prince. The Clippers also changing it up. Trey Tompkins checked in for DeAndre Jordan. Odom comes in for Blake Griffin. And it's Travis Leslie in for Jamal Crawford. It's been a struggle here for them to get the second chance points in this second half. Paul outside. Paul right side. Plays it in without an inch of room around him. Paul's got 33. And Chauncey Billups last season with the Clippers. It actually 
worked out for both, you know, he and the team, even though he got injured and had to miss a good chunk of the important part of the year. Yeah, it was too bad that he got injured because he was playing so well for the Clippers. Uh, but it was the right situation. I, I like the way the, the system works, and I think it will continue to be fair for the players and the teams, uh, you know, as, as the CBA goes onward, and we continue to see how it plays out. Paul against Knight. And the powerful one-handed slam. We see more and more point guards with that kind of impressive dunking ability, don't we? we absolutely. We're seeing more and more of that kind of explosiveness. In fact, the point guard now has never been as prominent and as important, I think, in the game than it is right now. Some of that is the rule changes, guys. No hand checks. The floor is more spread. But yeah, this new breed of athletic point guards so exciting. And that one should remove all doubt about the outcome of this game. This thing's over. Now it's just a matter of what the winning margin is going to be. Here's Big Dog. Here's Maggetti. Drops one in from the wing. There's 18 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Well, for the Clippers, they can just run out the clock. And here is Paul. Oh, my God. 